Welcome back to Technique Wad. Today we're talking about using rope pulls to improve upper body strength and endurance. All right, if you train at a CrossFit gym or a functional fitness gym or any strength and conditioning centric gym, you more than likely have a rope available to you. Um, legless rope climbs have become very popular uh, over the last like five or 10 years. A lot of people can't do them though. Of course, you could do regular rope climbs. You could you can scale how you you know how you use the rope, and you can do these kind of fall away, pull yourself up and down with your feet on the ground variations, and and that's fantastic. Uh, but today we're going to talk about using sleds and rope pulls as a a means to scale using the rope and doing legless rope climbs. There's two ways you can go about that. Now the first one here is already set up because we're doing this here at Faction today, where if you look down there, there's, there's a sled attached, attached to this rope right here. And then we put a barbell at the very bottom of the racks. You can just place your feet on the barbell, sit up nice and tall, and then you're going to be just pulling, reaching as far as you can on the rope, shoulders down, pulling your elbow back, using your lats. Just like that. So that's variation number one. We'll talk a little more about that in a second. Variation number two. In fact, we'll come out right here. Variation number two, uh, our friend Julian Pinot does quite a bit. We did this a lot when we did our shows with him uh, just a little while back, where it's essentially the same thing, except you are more specific to climbing a rope. You're in this more bent over position here, where now you're reaching a little bit more overhead and you're not, you're not doing all the way horizontal pulling. It's a little more of a vertical pull variation. And then what he likes to do is to keep it all right in front of you and do really fast pulls, more like that. Okay. I like these variations for a lot of reasons. Um, number one, you can put as much or as little weight on these sleds as you'd like, which makes it where you can scale a rope climb um, to whatever extent you want. You could be you know, 80 years old and have you know, a, mu a much smaller sled or even just a plain regular rope with nothing attached to it if you want to. And you could get the same movement pattern down and then scale up as you get stronger. Now, the other reason that I like these a lot is that uh, I put them in the same category as you know, actual sled pushing and pulling, um, sled drags and whatnot, air dines, um, rowing, where it's essentially now, essentially it is concentric only, which means that there's no active muscle lengthening. I'm here, I'm pulling the weight toward me, and then I'm deloaded as I go to regrip and then pull again. There's no active muscle lengthening, which it means you're not gonna get as much of a growth response, so it's not a very good way to build muscle mass necessarily, but it's a great way, just like doing airdyne sprints and pushing prowlers, it's a great way to condition, to get a lot of reps in, uh, to get a, you know, a big pump, um, and to train strength and endurance, but not get too beat up, not get too sore. That way you can come back in the next day and train very, very hard. That's why a lot of people like to push prowlers is because it doesn't beat you up very much. It's, it's super low impact, it's super low joint stress, uh, and doesn't make you very sore, which means you can do it a lot. So you can have much higher training volume using methods like this, uh, and it's a good thing if you're not trying to put on uh, a whole lot of muscle mass. If you're just trying to get in better shape and gain strength and endurance, it's fantastic. If you're trying to get bigger, then maybe it's not necessarily the best choice. Okay? Uh, as far as technique goes, <clears throat> I touched on a little bit on the seated version. Uh, for the standing version, similar. So, you know, have a you know just beyond shoulder width stance. Uh, generally, you know, a little bit wider than than hip width is, is more comfortable. And then I'm treating it like an RDL or any type of hip hinge. I have a slight bend in my knee, my back is nice and flat, you know, as flat as I can get it. And then from here, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sitting back into the weight on my heels. That way I don't just pull myself forward, especially if it's heavy. So I'm gonna sit back into the weight. I'm gonna reach as far as I can. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna grab like this, where my, my palm is facing down. I'm gonna rotate and have my palm basically facing up. And then from there, I'm gonna pull hard with my lats, my scapula's gonna depress, and I'm gonna pull in here. You should feel a pretty strong contraction with your lats. If you're getting all bicep, that's a problem. You're getting a lot of 
and again, Julian talks about this, you're getting a lot of internal torque. So you're getting a little bit of pec in there, lats, teres major, those are all internal rotators of the shoulder. So I'm pulling here, getting a strong lat contraction on both sides. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people that when they do rope climbs, their arms blow up. And I know other people where they almost don't feel it at all in their arms. If you're feeling it in your lats, that's a good thing. You want your bigger muscle groups, like your lats compared to your biceps, to be doing the bulk of the load because they're bigger and stronger. So they're not gonna fatigue as quickly, okay? Uh, so, um, try each one of these. Again, you can scale them as much as you want. Start off with a light weight, um, do, do fast reps. Um, you can even you know, do them at the end of your workout really, really light, where you do a, a bunch of fast reps and then you just run the, the rope straight, do a bunch of fast reps, run the rope straight, and just see how deep of a muscle burn you can get. If you're looking for muscular endurance, that's an awesome idea. Also, you know, this is gonna be very tough and challenging on your grip at the same time, depending on the thickness of the rope. Uh, bigger ropes tend to be harder, of course. So if you're working on your grip strength, this is also a great way to do that. So check that out. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm Doug Larson, um, a big part of the Shrug Collective. You know, I've been around since, since the beginning. Uh, it's been very, very fun. A lot of changes over the years. Right now we are um, posting about six shows per week, Monday through Saturday. Uh, on iTunes, and then we have a couple of YouTube shows. This is, of course, one of them. We post Technique Wads every Sunday. I'm on Barbell Shrug every Wednesday, and then sometimes we post Barbell Shrugs on Saturdays, kind of like every other week-ish at the moment. Uh, so watch those shows, give us feedback, tell us who you want as guests, what you want to hear about, etc. We're always looking for feedback. Uh, you can check out the Program Vault. Uh, that's our, our program membership site. We have all of our programs on there right now. You can go to shrugcollective.com backslash vault to check out those programs. I uh, also have my own personal site, douglarsonfitness.com, uh, where I have courses on mostly, mostly movement um, and nutrition. So go check that out, and I'll see you another day. Shrugged listeners, welcome to the Shrugged Collective Program Vault. Over the last six years, we've been leading the charge in online strength and conditioning programming and coaching. And for the first time in the history of the Shrug Collective, we're combining our 11 best-selling long-term and short-term accessory programs into one membership site called the Program Vault. From Olympic weightlifting to strongman, leaning out, nutrition, you name it, our 11 best-selling programs are yours for $47 a month. Get to shruggedcollective.com backslash vault and you will find immediate access to our 11 best-selling strength conditioning programs.